Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I sit on the board of trustees of the International Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by Dr. Bob Langer, as many of you know, he is a primary care physician, but an expert in preventive medicine and public health as an epidemiologist and has been one of the landmark investigators in so many studies that we have all read. Today, what I'd like to do is focus on the concept of prevention of chronic diseases in women and the role of menopausal hormone therapy. So, you know, we have a, a lot of um, recommendations that come out across the world in the United States. The Preventive Service Task Force is one of the groups that looks at uh, medication and says that menopausal hormone therapy should not be used for primary prevention of chronic diseases, yet we all want to age well. So where do you stand on that sort of blanket statement that menopausal hormone therapy is not useful when we think about aging well and chronic disease prevention? I think that that recommendation is horribly damaging to women's health across the world. And influential groups like the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force uh, uh, continue to promote misinformation that I think is unfortunately um, taken as evidence-based by clinicians, uh, particularly primary care doctors, uh, uh, who are then concerned and uh, uh, even don't consider menopausal hormone therapy uh, as a potential intervention uh, for their menopausal women, even though the women may be complaining of vasomotor and other symptoms uh, uh, for which menopausal hormone therapy could be beneficial. So if we look and, at, at some of the, the guidelines that have come out from the International Menopause Society, from the North American Menopause Society, from the Endocrine Society, all around the world, um, there's a strong endorsement for the use of menopausal hormone therapy in an appropriate window of, of opportunity, but none of them would endorse the use of menopausal hormone therapy for ischemic heart disease or stroke. So in younger women, why do you feel that perhaps that statement is erroneous? Well, I, I disagree with the way that you just stated that. Actually, in the most recent recommendations from the International Menopause Society that uh, I helped author, uh, we did say that uh, for women below the age of 60, typically women 50 to 59, uh, menopausal hormone therapy uh, could be appropriate for the prevention of coronary right. heart disease. But it lacks that endorsement as a primary preventive strategy, the way you would, for example, look at lipid medication. It's slow to catch on. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say look at lipid medication because in fact, if you look at the evidence base for primary prevention, there. for primary prevention of ischemic heart disease, there is a major gender disparity and yes. there is no support for prevention in women. In fact, on the other hand, there is strong support for prevention in younger women with menopausal hormone therapy. On top of that, statins that are often prescribed by primary care docs for supposed primary prevention in women have other adverse effects, particularly in women, like they yes. increase the risk of diabetes, right. which MHT reduces. Right, which I don't disagree with you at all. And even in secondary prevention, we see that same gender disparity as well. Yes, it's so interesting that if you speak to the average physician, there's that belief that the use of statins for primary and secondary prevention is critical without recognizing the gender bias, but we lack that same type of endorsement or comfort level, if you will, with the use of menopausal hormone therapy, for example, in a woman who doesn't have hot flashes, doesn't have the vasomotor indication, there's that, that reluctance to use menopausal hormone therapy in a woman for just exactly that, cardiovascular protection. I agree. Uh, there, in my experience in the United States, for example, there's even reluctance on the part of primary care physicians to prescribe MHT for vasomotor symptoms and other troublesome problems uh, in the menopausal transition. So I, I, I think that's an awful um, lack of understanding of the overall scheme of benefits and risks for MHT that we need to continue to do everything we can to correct. So not only does MHT 
clearly take care of menopausal symptoms, but started in women aged 50 to 59, we have absolutely clear evidence that it prevents ischemic heart disease, at least for estrogen by itself. And then right. the question becomes, which progestogen, and uh, you know, we have varying degrees of data for the relative profiles for each of the progestins that we have available. Yeah. And you make the very valid point that when it comes to diabetic prevention, the data for menopausal hormone therapy is far more positive than the very real concern of diabetes with the use of statin medications. So let's look at, rather than sort of what our beliefs are and how they're perpetuated, whether correctly or erroneously by a variety of organizations, how does menopausal hormone therapy compare to some of the other strategies for preventing major chronic diseases in menopausal women that primary care, other doctors seem to be far more open to embrace? Well, you know, in a sense, menopausal hormone therapy can be kind of the Swiss army knife of prevention uh, <laughs> in menopausal women uh, because um, uh, it clearly uh, for women started early, uh, helps protect against what is likely to kill 50% of older women, cardiovascular diseases, especially ischemic heart disease. Uh, I hasten to add that the data aren't quite as clear for stroke, um, more towards a null effect in, in most mm -hmm. of the uh, studies that have been looked at, and that really needs further exploration. Uh, but um, uh, when we consider some of the other major diseases that are also important for older women, uh, diabetes, uh, again, uh, if anything, a protective effect. And we know that diabetes contributes to lots of other diseases that we want to prevent. Uh, in addition, there's actually some uh, quite provocative data suggesting that menopausal hormone therapy uh, helps to maintain hearing uh, over time, helps to prevent falls. These are other uh, major important diseases worldwide. Osteoporosis? Osteoporosis. Uh, clearly, clearly osteoporosis. And there, it's extraordinary because in the WHI, there was very strong prevention of fractures related to osteoporosis in both arms of the study. And WHI is the only clinical trial that's ever been done looking specifically at osteoporosis that did not pre-select women for osteopenia. So this is an average woman. And it's so critical because most people forget about the ensuing mortality, particularly in women within one year of a hip fracture. This is not a benign event for women. Yeah, depending on which source you look at, anything between 25% and 40% yeah. of women who suffer a hip fracture at advanced age are dead within a year. And often osteoporosis doesn't end up as the primary cause on the death certificate, right. but in fact, it started that downward spiral. Absolutely, absolutely. And then the interesting data on colon cancer and menopausal hormone therapy, that's of interest too. Um, yet it seems that once that headline came out, it's now 20 years later, and the notion of menopausal hormone therapy as being something more important than the gold standard for hot flash of the night sweats still seems to elude practitioners. Absolutely. And it's due to the distortion of the WHI results for breast cancer uh, that uh, clearly set in the worldwide consciousness, the idea that this stuff was not really to be considered for primary prevention. Uh, and that was wrong because in fact, the results for breast cancer with the CEE plus MPA were never statistically significant. And the results for estrogen alone were actually in the opposite direction, ultimately significant mm -hmm. protection against breast cancer. Well, we could talk about this for hours because I'm on the same page as you, but for our listeners, unfortunately we do have to end, but there's a wonderful reference that I can give you that Dr. Langer has written called Prevention of Chronic Diseases in Women, Where Does Menopausal Hormone Therapy Fit In? And I would really encourage you to take a look at it. Thank you so much for joining us today.